If I were to tell you that Greg can do five billion joules of air, and then I ask you the question, is Greg a powerful man? And be careful how you answer that, because there's an exam coming up. <laughs> there's a question that you're going to want to ask. And that is, can Greg do all that work in a minute, or is it going to take the rest of his lifetime, like four years, to do that amount of air? Okay? So that gives you an idea of what we mean by power. Power is how quickly you do VERC. How much VERC you can do in one unit of time. And the, the unit that we take is typically the second. How much VERC we can do in one second. Now, I can write that this way. You take the total amount of VERC, you divide by the total number of seconds, and that gives you power. You can see the interpretation by setting delta t equal to one second. If this is one, then the power is the VERC, the VERC that you can do in one second. Now, VERC is what changes energy. So another way of thinking about power is how much you can change the energy of something, or how much energy you can deliver to something in one second. Now, there are a lot of problems in which you push with a constant push and you get a constant speed. Now, of course, that's because as you're pushing with 50 newtons this way, the friction force is pushing with 50 newtons the other way. But if I just want to know how much power I'm delivering, I don't care about the friction, just how much power I'm delivering, and this is a very common situation, I can rewrite this as force times distance and separate out the distance and put it over the time. Now the distance over the time is the speed. So in the special case where you're pushing with a force that always stays the same and your speed is always the same, then you can, you can describe the power delivered by the force times the speed. And you're going to need that in two of your homework problems for Wednesday for Wednesday. Now, what are the units of power? Anyone know? Watts. Watts. What? Watts. What? <laughs> yeah. A watt. A watt. Okay, again, named after a, a famous professor. Uh, you know, that's the way we honor dead professors. We named something like the Francis after them. Okay, and it's a joule per second. Now, by show of hands, how many of you pay your own power bill? Okay? So, when you pay your power bill uh, to the power company, what is it that you're buying from the power company? What do you pay for and, and actually uh, get from the power company? What is it you're buying? Kilowatt hours. Kilowatt hours. Kilowatt hours. And the question is, what is that? Well, a kilowatt is a thousand joules per second, a thousand watts, and an hour is 3,600 seconds. It seems a little longer in a physics class, but that's all it is, 3,600 seconds. If I multiply those out, uh, I get a thousand joules per second times 3,600 seconds. The seconds cancel, and I get 3.6 million joules. When we call it the power company, it's a misnomer. We're not buying power from the power company. We're buying energy. It should be called the energy company. Now, this is the amount of energy that you would pay 12 cents for. And that amount of energy would take a 100 watt bulb and light it for 10 hours. Okay, so that's that's pretty good deal. Now when we're talking about electric energy, and this is 207 stuff, this won't be on the exam, but a lot of people think that what you're also buying are electrons. That they're sending electrons through the wires to make your, your lamp light up. Well, you remember that the power at the wall here 
is alternating current, meaning that they turn the battery around 120 times per second. It's 60 hertz. They, they essentially change the polarity of the voltage 120 times each second. So that means if you, if you look at an electron that's going through the filament of your lamp, that electron, let's call him Fred, he's going through the filament, and then they change direction on it, and he's got to go the other way, and then he's got to go the other way. And they change that direction 120 times per second. Now, when I was growing up, I used to think that those electrons were going through the wires at the speed of light. And I used to think, whoa, how do they make the corners? <laughs> how do they make the turns? Well, it turns out that they are moving incredibly slowly. If we take that electron and paint him green, call him Fred, and we, and we look at him as he goes through the starting motor of your car, from the negative terminal of the battery through the starter and back to the positive, if you leave the key turned in the ignition for two weeks, that will give Fred enough time to make it through the starter and back, moving incredibly slowly. So that means that when the power company lights up your lamp, what they're really doing is going in to the electrons that were already in the filament of your lamp. You didn't buy it from the power company. They, they came from the, the goodwill, okay? And they're taking those electrons and they're just, just shaking, shaking them, okay? Just back and forth, back and forth. That's what causes the filament to heat up and glow, okay? Now, many, many years ago, I used to work at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. That's this nation's... Well, it's the uh, nuclear weapons lab for this nation. I never worked on nuclear weapons, but uh, everyone else at the lab says that too. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, at that weapons lab, we had the most powerful laser in the world. To this day, it's still the most powerful laser in the world. It's called the Nova laser, and it's made up of 10 laser beams, and the beams are in a great big room the size of a football field. I mean, this thing is enormous. This is a scientist. They're a little smaller than humans, but you get the, <laughs> get the drift. This thing is, is huge. And as the laser beam goes down these 10 beam lines, they pass through these great big neodymium lenses. Now, before the laser goes through the lens, the lens is excited with energy and uh, to a higher energy state if you've taken your chemistry class. The laser beam going through this lens causes all of the excited atoms to fall down to their ground state, each atom giving off another photon and making the beam stronger and stronger and stronger. And then they take the 10 beams and they focus it down on a, uh, a target. And again, these are scientists here, so you can see the scale. And they focus those beams down so small that they can hit this target right here. A little tiny bead of glass filled with a little bit of deuterium and tritium. Now, by hitting that on all sides, 10 sides, with these massive laser beams, they create the same temperature and pressure in the target as is in the center of the sun. And that causes the same reaction that we have in the center of the sun, fusion. And by taking those small elements, deuterium and tritium, and fusing them together, a huge amount of energy is released. How much energy? If you take a gallon of water, seawater, and you remove the, hydro, the heavy hydrogen, the deuterium and tritium, You've got 99.999% of your water left. You can still surf, okay? You take that tiny amount of deuterium and tritium from one gallon of seawater, you fuse it, and you get enough energy to equal 600 barrels of oil. If we get this to work, it's free energy for everyone. Free energy for everyone. Now this laser, the reason I'm telling you this, is that this laser delivers 
200 times the total power output of all the power stations in the United States. All of them combined. 200 times that. Makes you wonder, where do they get this power? Canada? <laughs> Mexico? No, they get it from Pacific Gas and Electric. And this power is trickle all day long into a great big room filled with capacitors that stores the energy. Now, when I look at the formula for power, it's the energy that you deliver divided by the time. There's two ways to make this ginormous. One is you could deliver a, a, an enormous amount of energy. But that's not the way they do it. They do it by delivering the energy in less than a billionth of a second. If I make this time really, really small, my power gets really, really big. The catch is they only deliver that energy for a billionth of a second, and then they've got to store energy all day long for tomorrow's run. Whereas the energy that's coming from uh, your power stations, they got to deliver it to your house all day long. Okay, so it's a little misleading when we say 200 times the power output of all the power stations in the U.S. Now, every now and again, if you read the newspaper, you'll see some of our politicians griping about the number of state employees we have in Montana. They'll say, Montana has more state employees per capita than any other state in the union. The key is the per capita. We don't have any people in Montana. Okay, we got one governor. California has one governor. That means like we've got 800 times more governor per person than California does. Okay. On the bright side, we got fewer state employees per cow than any other state in the union. It's all in the division. It's all in the division. 